Hey, this is Joe at Gray Bench Electronics. Welcome back to the Pedal Teardown Series where I take apart new and interesting pedals and show you what's going on inside. Today we have the Prescription Electronics Yard Box. All right, so we have the Prescription Electronics Yard Box. First off, as you can see, 1590BB size enclosure. I don't think there's a powder coat. It doesn't feel quite as thick as you would normally expect for a powder coat. So I think it's some type of paint and the Yard Box logo appears to be print screened on. For controls, we have volume, fuzz, and troubler bass. The Yard Box here is, of course, a three knob tone bender clone or derivative at least. And the troubler bass control is essentially a big muff tone control. And then you have your fuzz control, which is just like the standard tone, tone bender Mark III and volume control. The knobs are what I think of as like the Marshall style knobs, like what you would see on a, a, a Marshall Plexi maybe. I'm not that familiar with Marshall amps, but when I see these knobs, I think Marshall. LEDs are red, five millimeter red LED. We have top mounted jacks, quarter inch jacks, and the plastic Kobecon style 2.1 millimeter jack. Yard box logo styled after the, the band Yardbirds and the, and the information from Prescription Electronics. That's pretty much it for the outside. Let's go ahead and crack it open. All right, here's the inside of the yard box from Prescription Electronics. So we have the enclosed style quarter inch jacks. Those are just standard stereo jacks. They're both stereo, which usually isn't necessary. You usually only need the input jack stereo so you can turn on or off the battery. But in this case, what they're actually doing is, well, one, they're using stereo jacks for both. That way you only have to buy stereo jacks. In worst case, you just don't use the, uh, the ring connection on the out jack. But you can also see here that the positive and negative leads from the uh, battery connector here are not going, usually you'll see the red lead for a, a negative ground pedal. You'll see the red lead going over to the ring connection for the input jack. However, in this case, they're connecting both to the DC jack and then the uh, this would be the uh, barrel connection here is coming down to the ring connection for the input jack. So what they're doing is they're disconnecting ground from the, uh, the power connections completely with the input jack. So when that's not plugged in, regardless of whether you're powering with the battery or with DC jack input, your ground, your power, the negative side is lifted. Uh, in this case, it's actually the positive side because this is a positive ground pedal. So it's actually lifting the positive, but the point is that the power is disconnected regardless of battery or DC power when the input jack's not inserted. We have a standard blue latching foot switch. Tensiometer alpha pots, they're all B250K, so linear 250K pots. Wiring, it's a little bit of rat's nest inside. We have wires crossing over, which generally for a high gain pedal, like a fuzz pedal is not such a great idea. If you're gonna have them cross, you would rather them be like this, where it's at roughly 90 degrees, rather than having parallel lines running like this. You can get oscillations and noise. I did play the pedal, doesn't seem to have that issue, so. But that is one thing to look out for if you have a pedal that's oscillating, especially like a fuzz pedal. Go in and dress up your wires and see if that doesn't help. Also for tremolos, if you get that clock ticking sound in your tremolo, go mess with your wires, especially your input and output jacks. For components, we have carbon film resistors. Those are the tan resistors down there appear to be quarter watt resistors. The electrolytics are, they look like Zycons. Uh, yeah, the electrolytics one there, one there are both Zycon electrolytics. The caps here, these blue ones are film caps uh, and they say MF, that might be Mallory maybe, or I'm not sure exactly what brand that is. The silver film caps here are usually pretty low value. That one looks like a uh, 220 picofarad, this one not so sure. And then there's a little, what looks like a tantalum capacitor or actually let me see. Yeah, this capacitor down here is a tantalum. For transistors, these are marked SK3722. A couple of them have the day code, or at least what looks like a day code 9431, so 31st week of 1940, uh, 1994. The enclosure itself, I can see the Hammond logo down there. So this is a Hammond brand 1590BB. We've got a little piece of foam here for a battery. Let me drop the battery in there. It'll help keep it from rattling around. One thing I found is that the, the way this is put together with the uh, foot switch here, it is a really tight fit with the battery, which, okay. Actually, this one's not so bad. So it's gonna depend a little bit on the nine volt battery you use. Some of them will fit better than others. This is an Amazon brand one and that one fits pretty okay. And then that foam at the bottom is keeping it from rattling. Ideally, you'd have another piece of foam here on the lid. When you bring them together, it keeps it from rattling. In this case, it's pretty good either way. So, and then yeah, so this is the three knob version. There was a four knob version that has a gain control. It's essentially like another potentiometer right before the volume control. This one doesn't have it. I think these ones are older and the later versions had the gain control where the LED is here. Either way, it's essentially the same pedal. It's just one has sort of like a pre-output volume. So like a lot of fuzz pedals, good idea to get in here and test the voltages on the transistors. That way we can compare to known values for the Tone Bender Mark III. Uh, so let's set up for that now. First off, we'll check our battery here. 
Battery's coming in at 9.18 volts. Plug in our input jack because we need that to complete the circuit for the power. And we will clip on positive to ground because this is a positive ground pedal. That way our multimeter readings here will be in positive volts. It doesn't really matter. It's the absolute value that we care about, but make it a little easier to read. Starting here for the emitter. So this, the transistors are out of order. So it's Q2, Q1, and then Q3 over here. This is Q2 emitter which is 1.404 volts. So that's right here, a meter of Q2, 1.4 volts. And that has the 3.3K and the bypass cap 4.7 microfarad. In this case, it's actually 10 microfarad in this pedal, but that'll let a little more base low end through. But yeah, so we have 1.4 volts there. Moving over to the base of Q2 is 1.51 volts. And that's also gonna be the emitter of Q1 uh, because they're connected together. So we can prove that. So emitter of Q1 is right there and that's the same 1.51. And then over here, this is the collector of Q2, 3.43 volts. And the collectors of the two transistors are connected together. So it should be the same voltage, 3.43. We can check that here and there you go. Let's check the base on Q1. Base on Q1 is 1.59 volts. So there you go, base of Q1, 1.59 volts. And then moving over to Q3. Q3 emitter is at zero, of course, because that's connected directly to ground. The base, oh, the base is kind of hard to get to. We'll come back to the base. The collector of Q3, there we go. Collector of Q3 is 4.49 volts. And that is with the advertised 18K resistor. It's hidden here under the wire, uh, but there is 18K shown on the schematic here and then 18K in the pedal. So that's setting up about four and a half volts, which is about half the supply. So it's biased right in the middle of its available power range. The base of Q3 is connected here to the fuzz pot and we can see the fuzz pot set up just as a variable resistor. And we can see our fuzz pot here has pin one and pin two or lug one and two uh, connected together, just like the schematic shows. And so we can just measure here because this is, this connection is the base of Q3. So right here is base of Q3. And that is 0 0.036 volts. And there you go, 0 0.036 volts. So there you go, those are the transistor voltages for the yard box. You can also see over here, here's that gain control that isn't on this version of the yard box. You can, it's just sort of like a pre-volume. All right, so those are the internals of the prescription electronics yard box. Let's go ahead and put it back together. All right, that was a teardown of the Prescription Electronics Yard Box. If you have any questions or recommendations for a pedal you want to see on an upcoming teardown episode, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribing. I'm Joe from Gray Bench Electronics. Thank you for watching.